I was sitting in my room thinking of how big liminality is and how I would bring it to you today. Liminality is another word for threshold, and that's our topic. I had at least seven different sermons going back and forth in my mind. Which one had the best merit? Which one could be developed the most full? Which one had open spaces, yet none of them seemed right? I turned to my phone right here in frustration, and I was thinking, why is this sermon so freaking hard to write? Why is the theme thresholds? And why are there so many things to choose from? I could talk about thresholds for an hour, yet I don't have that much time. So what am I going to do? Picked up my phone again, and I thumbed through cute pictures of baby dogs and baby cats and baby humans and cute quotes, and I felt my anxiety just mellow a little. And I remembered that liminality or thresholds is really something that can be summed up in some simple ways. And so I hope to do that for you today. Liminality was introduced to us by Arnold Van Gennep in 1902. He was an ethnographer and a folklorist who was focused on the three stages of rites of passage ceremonies. The three stages are separation, marginality or liminality, and union or incorporation. His theories were based on his belief that human rites of passage were tied to the understanding of fixed and changeable forces such as age or social structures. In the first stage, separation, is when the person separates from the perceived social structure. The initia is said to stand in a space of ambiguity, which is the entrance into the second stage, liminality. In Latin, the word lemon means a threshold or boundary, therefore, the travel from the known to the unknown, from the social bound of a group to the characteristics of the space unbound and not yet ready to move to the third stage, union, in which the person returns to a status that has been raised and they are raised to the institution and restored. The idea of liminality has been built upon through the centuries and has been defined and redefined by people in other fields. Theologically speaking, liminal space is in between. It is a space where spirit speaks. It is the womb of transformation. Sufi poet Rumi speaks of liminal space in the poem, This We Have Now. He says, This we have now. It is not imagination. This is not grief or joy, not a judging state or an elation or sadness, these come and go. This is the presence that doesn't. Do you remember when you experienced the presence that doesn't? There are so many, right? Some are looming and represent vast joys and sorrows, and some are a blip and hardly noticed. They last seconds. In liminal space, I often feel anxious because I like things to be just so. I wouldn't say that I'm controlling, but I could admit to being tidy in my thoughts and ideas of how things should be. You can imagine the opportunities that I experience to encounter liminality. Every time before I preach, I enter a space that I sit in the pulpit or I sit right here in my chair and I pray before I walk up to the microphone of my computer here or to the microphone in the pulpit. And sometimes it is deep and meaningful, like help me to speak the truth and, and to be of service and to spread love, I pray. And sometimes, other times, it's simply an anxiety-ridden prayer like, Please don't let me forget my reading. Please let all of the pages of my sermon be here and in order. And may no F-bombs cross my lips.
<laughs> the first time I preached, my mother-in-law told me a story about an arrogant minister that would stroll to the pulpit in his very expensive suit, looking stunningly manicured and pious. And one Sunday, he reached the pulpit, as he always did when he got there, and he realized that he had forgotten his papers. He had a hot mic moment in which he said, Que mierda! Or in English, oh shit. The lesson has stuck with me. First, don't act so pious. Secondly, double and triple check your paper. And third, make sure your mic is turned off until you're ready to speak. Fourthly, if none of these things work, do as the pious minister did and go back and get your papers humbly. Sometimes I feel like my life is in liminal space. To put it simply, liminal space is the space that exists between one thing and the other. And living in liminal space has never seemed simple to me. I often feel restricted and anxiety ridden and I feel out beyond the norms. Early in childhood, I learned that I wasn't like the other kids. Not because of the reasons that most people could readily point out about me, but because of my budding theology. I believe that there was spirit in all things and spirit in the tiny pieces of dust that floated down from bookshelves and spirit in the stuff lying at the bottom of my bed and spirit in the railroad rocks that I picked up along the train tracks, spirit in birds that I chattered to and spirit everywhere in the world. The world was teeming with the spiritual insights and the vantage points. It was beautiful how my world offered spaces where I could discover and assign my own meaning. And most of my experiences were positive and joy-filled. And later, as I got older, of course, the world become, became more complicated and I learned of evil. Do you remember the first time you learned of evil? There is something that comes that just strangles everything that you know and tinges it with a darkness that we can never fully get away from. I won't go into all of the evils I experienced, but I will say that even evil lives in liminal space. It's tough when you know that in liminal space, goodness is there, evil is there, and all of the in-betweens, the liminality. One humongous, major, probably the biggest liminal space that I ever lived in or should I say I died in, was when I died for 20 minutes. I know, that is a lot. I won't tell you the hows or whys, but I will tell you that the liminality of death helped me to understand the peace of life. It allowed me to see that liminal space is just a container. It's a place for you to be in. It's a place for you to breathe in and to determine or to just enter into the what is next. It's a container for you to be, for you to be able to witness the beauty that lives there, the knowing that lives there, and the grief that lives there. When I come out of liminal spaces, I feel transformed. And I learned that through meditation, I can take breaths and hold spaces there, right in the middle of my liminal space. I breathe in, and I say, I'm okay. And I know that someone in this room right now is experiencing grief of the loved one dying, the grief of an unwanted separation, the grief of addiction and lost spiritual community, children going off to college, poverty. There are so many things that I can name. And now I just want you to breathe in with me and say, quietly to yourself. I can be here. I am safe here. This is my container of peace. I will be transformed. There is beauty here. And then open your eyes and sear it into your brain. Liminal space is here for us to stop, breathe, and experience the moment. It may even transform us.
May you feel, fill your space with the beauty of possibility and the knowledge of the divine.